the last second half of the year has been good. Obviously not keeping my card in Europe was a bit disappointing, but you know, I'm yeah, optimistic every time I try and play. Whether you always show up or not is, you know, something uh, maybe to discuss behind closed doors. If I play like I do this week or see some sort of merit coming out of it, I enjoy playing. I've got a few other ideas I want to go into maybe the next four or five years and and see where that takes me and then maybe give that senior tour a go. Although I'd like to keep playing in the summers and, and see if I play well enough to keep a card to keep going. But the other time, uh, the other nine months of the year, I need to do something that uh, I'm passionate about uh, besides just golf, you know. Personally, I did not play much as a youngster competitively. When I turned 18, I probably started playing more competitively and, and uh, or to really started playing competitively and then went to college and then sort of just picked it up quite quickly. Was it ever the, ever the best or the greatest at it? No, but I enjoyed, and I enjoyed the competitiveness and the challenges of golf. I think the competitiveness of that US program and, uh, at, at school or college level uh, really kick-started things for me there. I was fortunate to have good roommates and good golfers help me along the way playing. And I think that's where I'm getting to, starting to give back a little bit and see if I can help some of these youngsters out that, that are battling a little, can play, but maybe needs a little bit of guidance, you know? And maybe that's the time for me to start giving back what I received at a fairly late uh, time uh, as, as, a, as an amateur on how to play the game. I love giving back and I think people have misunderstood me over the years that I'm, I'm quite private and into my own little world because I don't want to give my energy to others. But I feel like now um, I do. You know, Vicky and I, we don't have kids, so maybe I, maybe we can take a few of these kids under our wing and, and teach them a bit of, of, of what it's like to play on tour and, and live, you know. A couple of guys I spoke with in the last few months, or maybe at the last couple of years, that I've said, listen, why don't we have more guys on tour winning? Why don't we have another major champ? What is the what is the reason for that? You know, I think Ernie and Retief, Charles, Louis won each, but someone needs to step up and say, okay, I'm going to win five majors. And there's no reason why our guys shouldn't be able to do that. And I think there's a little bit of a gap uh, where where it's going missing, and hopefully we can fill that gap and get the next major champ coming out the Sunshine Tour. You know. Well, it's fantastic for senior golf in South Africa. They, uh, we have been on a bit of a lull, and um, we have many great players in South Africa, many great senior players, and looking forward to some more coming in soon. So for there to be a, a, a tour for South Africans to play in, that's fantastic. I think we had to put the stake in the ground. Uh, there's been a lot of hard work that uh, has got to where we are today, and that's very much about announcing the relationship between EWT and the senior tour. Uh, and the cause that both of them uh, see commonalities uh, together. Um, so this part of an actual tour, a 10 tour concept, uh, we're looking at five events for 2017 and uh, 10 by the end of 2018. It's a new beginning. There's, uh, there's an alliance between the, the Senior Tour and Endangered Wildlife Trust, which I think makes a huge amount of success. It gives the opportunity for them to promote that and also hopefully to make some extra money out of that. They've already had you know, encouraging uh, reaction from some of the top players, like Mark McNulty, who said he's going to play. John Bland is going to play. If Simon Hobday is able to, I'm sure Simon Hobday will play. So uh, I think it'll be absolutely fantastic. I think it's going to be... Uh, a real boost for, for senior golf in South Africa. You do have to dig deep in these two tournaments because you know there's a lot on the line. The season doesn't end but we all get re-ranked. So it kind of does end because if you fall out of that top 50, then you're going to have to pre-qualify for co-sanctioned tournaments. And if you get into it, then you don't have to pre-qualify. So it makes a massive difference. And there's a lot of guys feeling the heat out here this week, myself included, but you do have to, you do have to just dig deep and, and stay in the moment that you're in, I guess. This is like our majors, you know? So it's, um, this is what you practice for, this is what you work up to, try and peak in these events. And, um, you know, so I'm real glad my golf is looking good. It can either make or break your year. 
So uh, and it can turn a very average season to a very good season. So yeah, um, you know, definitely good practice for next week. Uh, playing for a little bit more money this week. So yeah, kind of getting us ready for next week. Next week's a big one. You know, you're trying to find sort of last last event before the sort of re-rank and all of that. So. Um, trying to you know, make a move and get into a position to start next year and give yourself the best opportunity going into next year. To have a sponsor like Alfred Daniel committing to us for another year, for Mr Rupert, for giving us the opportunity to play such a great course like Leopard Creek, we're really excited to once again have it on our calendar and we can't wait for the week to happen. Obviously the European Tour is giving a massive opportunity to uh, South African players who, to make that leap into the European Tour and play on a global scale. Both parties are benefiting really well and I think the relationship has been very strong over the last few years. I think with the way that the, the schedule is being structured now it's going to be catering to a lot better fields coming to South Africa which is very exciting for the South African golfing community. It's all about the location. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere in the bush and so close to the Kruger National Park. It's just, um, it's amazing seeing all the animals and playing in the bush is always, it's always great. And just find a little gem in the middle of nowhere is always nice. I love Leopard Creek. I've, I've loved it ever since I first played it, or first saw it rather. Leopard Creek as a golf course is my top three I've ever, I've ever played. So. It's a week that I thoroughly enjoy and I'm really, really looking forward to.